Brave Creatures is inspired by the British natural landscapes. I had this idea in my head for a long time to do something in the fairy world because, I don't know, you could just imagine like little creatures living everywhere <laughs> inside of it. And what would it be like to be that small and experience the world from that point of view? Hello. It comes to our attention that Epic Games might be funding some experimental work. And it was like, well, this is perfect because I've been using Unreal Engine on big movies to do virtual production. And so to really like lean into Unreal Engine was exciting. Because I come from a live action background, that means I'm used to walking in real sets and exploring and discovering cool things. And there's this feedback loop that the real world gives you. The big advantage of Unreal Engine throughout the creative process is this instant feedback. And I knew as a director, it's a process that I needed. Your instincts kick in and you just try stuff and you discover things. You can grab an iPad and just like start finding shots each part of the process is revealing more. We start by working out spaces, where we're gonna work, where the action's gonna take place, what looks good on camera, things like that. And for me, that's where VR is amazing, right? I can immerse myself in the real space, move around, walk around, fly around. I can start lining up camera angles even before the animation has happened and new ideas come to light. And I don't really need a storyboard at that point because I'm already finding where my shots are by being in that space. The instant response of the engine is amazing because you're really looking at something that feels like a shot. It has lighting, it has depth of field, it has atmospherics. You then want to start fleshing it out and detailing it and getting a camera down, literally down in the weeds of this world. We used a chunk of the Mega Scans library, chuck them in and scatter them around, jump in and roam around and explore doesn't just make it faster. It makes you feel like you tried things and you made a choice instead of you got what you got. As an animation person, you learn the face as a language, an emotional language. So we were starting production. We saw that out in the community, people were leveraging the meta-human rigs to build all these alternative face rigs with their own characters. So we were like, let's do that. And suddenly we had this beautiful version of the metahuman technology, but on our characters. So, what is it? Accuracy is not just about how skin moves. It's about whether you can achieve emotional clarity. And those rigs are very good at that. You're getting sort of truisms coming out of the face. So that was a huge boost. Our project really depended on extremely shallow depth of field due to the scale of the story. So we went back to Epic and we just raised the question, should we do Path Tracer? What was really gratifying was that Kim Library and the Path Tracer team were like, yeah, let's make this happen for you guys. And they developed some code that we folded in and we just sort of jumped in. We could have gotten something great anyway, but definitely path tracing pushed us over a kind of quality threshold into some subtleties, I think. Bringing together in-camera atmospherics, the depth of field, the motion blur, all those beautiful things that the path tracer gave us was really cool. We could develop the whole thing in real time and then kind of fork to the path tracer at the end and get all those benefits that it offered. I can get the best of both. Unreal Engine's kind of this intersection of all these exciting things. There's just a bunch of things you need coming together in one place with really impressive engineering behind it. So if you're trying to do visual storytelling right now in the digital space, this becomes like a movie studio, you know, on your computer. And that's pretty awesome.